Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Can you believe it's been a month since the launch of the Port Jefferson GMT? About a month. We're almost at four weeks, three and change. Last year we were doing watches like every two weeks, trying to slow it down a bit. Today I'm here to tell you about the Green Port. It is an awesome 39 millimeter diver. So it is actually our first 39 millimeter diver. I know we've done 38s, we've done 40s, 42, so who cares? 39. Well, it's a great size, of course. 39 millimeter green port with our first Miyota 8205 movement. It's a vertical day date, really nifty. I really wanted to bring back the feel of like Citizens and Seiko's from way back when with that little date arrangement at the bottom. I'm actually still wearing the same two watches from the last video, uh, my Ultimate Vacation Watch Showdown, the Casio versus the Seiko. So no close-ups there. Let's get on to the green port. The Islander Green Port, model numbers on these are going to be ISL 250, 250. Oh my goodness, we're up to 200. Actually, we're in like the 260s, 270s on numbering things. This is going to be model numbers 250 through 254. I got five colors, five colors to show you. Greenport, little town, north fork of Long Island. If you don't know Long Island, it looks like a fish kind of. Heads over here, tail here, north fork, south fork. Your Montauk that most people know is over here. Orient Point is the one all the way up here. There's a ferry that goes to Connecticut. Greenport's <laughs> somewhere around here. So the Greenport is... It's my first Miyota 8205 based watch. All the Miyota movements I've done so far, with the exception of the Rangemaster Mechanical, uh, have been, you know, 9015s, 9039s, or whatever. Um, this is an 8205 simply because I want it really bad. There's a vertical day date arrangement at the six, which keeps the dial in beautiful, beautiful balance. It's not symmetric. I don't want to use that term. I know people get bent out of shape. Bent out of shape. That's pretty funny with being symmetric. Uh, so, it keeps the dial balanced. Let's get into it. Is 39 millimeters. It's also, well, actually, our first 39 millimeter watch. We've done 38 millimeter diver, I should say. We've done 38 millimeter divers, 40 millimeter divers, 42 millimeter divers, 40 and a half, 43, whatever. First 39 millimeter. It's 39 to the case. The bezel does stick out proud, just a scrimmigeon, but it's a 39 millimeter case. Is 13 thick, whoops. So the 13 that I'm gonna telling you is from the back of the case to just to the edge of the crystal. If you're encountering that slight dome of the sapphire, it's a single dome sapphire, you're looking at about 13 and a half to the apex of the dome. Is 47 on the lug to lug? And yes, come on, focus. And yes, focus, not Mark, not the camera, Mark. No, not Mark, the camera. It does have uh, the female or negative end links. It is a brushed case on the top and the sides, a little bit of polish here on the chamfer, and we have similar on the bracelet, the H-Link bracelet, brushed and then polishing just on the tops and bottoms of the center links. It really gives it some nice glitz when you move it around. Uh, it is a, I feel like I forgot something, it's a 20 millimeter link, end link, uh, tapering to 18 at the clasp. It is solid link, solid end link size with screws is a four position micro adjust clasp. With the word Islander on it, it is a milled, really nice milled scissor clasp. Case back is the Islander lighthouse with the logo and it is 200 meters of water resistance. Okay, so, oh, I didn't mention price. We didn't mention weight either. 170 grams on the bracelet with all the links. 279 bucks. So it is our most affordable diver to date. Notice I did not say cheap. It's the most affordable diver to date. The bezel for these, we actually went for something a little more useful, uh, a dual time bezel. Uh, so you can, it's a bi-directional and with gloves, it might be hard. Ready? And there it goes. So now I'm going to have to center it, right? There it goes. One, two. Okay, I think we're pretty centered. And it is ceramic. Let's come up on the watch a little bit more. So this is the ISL 250. It's a black dial, orange accents. The day and date is done a little bit negative. Isn't that cool? So you unscrew the crown to set the time. Something I do want to go over with this watch. People might think there's a dual language day wheel. There is not. One direction does the date. The other direction does the day. So the alternate spot is actually blank. Okay, because when you roll it through the time like this, 
Uh, the date will change at midnight. If it is midnight, let's go through again. Ready? Watching that 31 at the bottom and boink. And then the day goes. One, two. So by 3 o'clock a.m., the day is present again. Uh, we have military time, 13 through 23, written on the inside of the dial. And then, so where normally in the bottom you'd have automatic 200. That's what I usually would do. Uh, I opted instead. I'm going to flip it to the camera a little bit. 200 on the right and auto on the left. It kind of kept the whole thing still in. What's that word? Yes, balance. And there you go, the Islander green port, but not the green one. There is a green one coming up next. This is the black with the orange accents. Um, I think I covered it all. Miota 8205, the size. I'm just going through my notes real quick. If you can even call them notes. So this would be the green, green port. Kind of a green, kind of like a minty green. Uh, it is a, uh, it's a sunburst dial. The, the black I showed you was sort of flat. This is more of a sunburst dial. It's a light green. Uh, what are you, I'm not really good with describing colors. It's definitely not emerald. It's a little bit more blue or tealish, if you will. It's got the orange accents, but check out the day and the date. So the day is an orange background with white writing, and the date is the greenish background with orange writing. Again, it's very fun. Uh, it's a great color, it, very playful the way everything works together. Then the bezel insert for this one, we chose a white ceramic with uh, black relief. Looks super cool. We'll get into the loom. Obviously, every Islander I, I make, like, you know, I try to get as much loom into it as possible. But let's come up on that dial a little bit more. You can see that sunburst kind of come to life a bit. Really, really nice looking. And I guess I think for the price at $279, a little bit mashugana, if you ask me. But it's where I wanted to go with this one. So I had to do a standard, I don't have to, but I did. I did a standard deep blue. Um, not deep blue the brand, deep blue the color. It is a sunburst blue, again with the orange accents. A little bit of a theme going here, but the orange just worked. We do have a blue bi-directional bezel. The hands, if I didn't, I did not mention, are like syringe style, but a little bit of a fatter syringe, more for someone that uses larger needles for their, uh, for their habits. Really cool. The back's the same, the bracelet's the same. This blue, really, really nice. I, you know, I try to always do a, a, a black, a blue, and a white. Will there be a white coming? We'll find out. Just wait three minutes, or maybe two minutes. Actually, no. <laughs> wait three seconds. So, white with blue. Islander colors, right? A little bit of a different hue, but I really, oh, I gotta fix that day, huh? It's, it's going through this flip. I really like the way white and blue work together, but this is a different hue or a different shade of blue. And then that, the rehaut, actually on this one it is a chaptering, not rehaut. It's a layered effect on the dial, done in a little bit of a deeper blue color. Really slick looking though. Looks really, I love this white and blue. So here's where I went a little askew. Uh, I made a second white because I liked the white so much wanted to, to attract more of the female population or whoever, or you're a guy that likes pink, I really don't care. As long as you're, as, as, as my father used to say, as long as their money is green, Mark, what do you care? Uh, so you can see the AR actually coming to life when I go through the, um, when I go through the rotation. I, I had my wife try this on and um, she's, she, well, she doesn't buy one. She's taking one. She really liked this pink. So it's a white dial, pink accents uh, around on the chapter ring, on the loom, if you could see it. Um, and then the bezel insert itself, slightly different because it is ceramic, so you can't get the exact match. It's a little more of a lavender, uh, so a bit of a purple thrown in there. I'm sure, I think the difference comes through. In the viewfinder, it's not always easy to show, but I think it's coming through um, in the camera. Look how nice that looks. Is that really awesome? 39 is a great, 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 great size. That was a lot of greats. That was like four greats. A lot of greatin. That's it. Let's, um, let's, see, let's see what the loom brings us. So they're all going to light up. I'm just going to show you two of them. The black dial is in my left hand. <laughs> the, blue, oh, the blue dial is in my right hand. You got BGW9. 
on the right, C3 on the left. The hands are done in the contrasting color, as you can see, uh, and the bezels are illuminated as well. Um, they all look great. You, when you go to the website to shop and buy one, you will see that um, we have the loom shots for all of them. You did probably already notice that the logo and name already died out from being lit up, and that's just because there's just not a lot of paint there. So that just looks great to begin with. Um, it's going to die off fast, but everything else just looks, looks excellent. So here is that ISL 250 on my 6.5, 6.75 inch wrist below the bone, above the bone. Looks nice, fits nice. Oh, probably about an inch or so, so seven three quarter or so eight inch. But as you guys know, if you need extra links, just ask us, and we are happy to oblige. Um, I know the question is going to be asked. No, there are no other bracelets for these watches, nor are there other bezel inserts. Um, we're getting up to the point now. I'm just gonna keep talking. We're getting up to the point now where a lot of the designs are really their own. They're their own design, and they don't share elements with another case or you know, like SKX and stuff like that. More, we still have those coming. Um, you know, there's more North Ports coming on, you know, on the way and stuff. And um, there'll definitely be more SKX variant watches. But a lot of the newer stuff, yeah, it's really just, it's its own thing. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of the backwards compatibility to SKX, et cetera, has disappeared. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you the Islander Green Port. Vertical day date. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the content and want to see more. Questions, comments, concerns, anything else, put it down below, and I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.